So I was kind of interested in seeing if Blazor WebAssembly would work in conjunction with with Orchard. And so I thought, well, this is going to be kind of interesting. So I put together an example and you can see here, um, I, I don't know if you want to go through the code or just want me to run the application or is there any requests or <laughs> how, about, how about if I just go run the application here? So let me you start talk the from the application and then you dive into code. Okay, so let's go ahead and run it. So is it a, a Blazor Wasm project? Is it an Orchard module? Um, it's, well, Blazor's basically runs in the browser, right? So it's an application that runs in the browser, just like if it was JavaScript. So you can see here's the first page, and this is a Blazor WebAssembly application. But if I go to like log, so the, the routing is still working for Angular or for Orchard Core. I can go to out. And I can even go into. So you made the module or did you add the files in the main project? Are you talking about the, the Blazor assembly yes. application? Yes, in this example. Um, well, yeah. So basically, I can show that later. Okay. Let me show. So that we can go in and log in here. Okay. And so. If I go into configuration, going into have GraphQL enabled here. Um, so if you go here, you can see that I have something defined already here. If I go into security, I have open ID connect so that I'm making sure that I'm a secure site, right? And so if I go into security here, um, roles, I have a role set up for API, which has access to the GraphQL API. So I'll go ahead and run the application. And so I can get the, the token here. If I click, go ahead and click on this, I have a client ID and I have a secret ID that I have installed into Orchard Core. And so I can just do a query on that and I can get the bearer token here, as you can see. And here's the request body, which is up here. And then here's the body, which is the actual token. And then here's the response header. And of course, you can see it's powered by Orchard Core. And then I can take that token, put it down here in the bearer, and I can add or remove items here. And if I go ahead and click on send, I went ahead and I got bring down a blog post. And so I'm rendering the blog post with Mark Dig on the screen here. So it's, it's kind of nice. It's, everything is run, all this code here is running inside the browser and it's all in C-sharp. So we're all very familiar with that. So any questions? Yes. So client ID, what, what is the client ID? The, the client ID? Yeah, wh where do you get that value from? That's part of the open connect authentication for a token, for a JWT token. Right. Where, where you okay, here, okay, let, okay, let's go into Orchard Core. Because I think I know where you got it from, and I think. Uh, yeah, you should. You guys designed it. Um, no, but I've, I've demoed that also <laughs> from the, the console app. That's why I want to be sure. Okay, but, you made it, okay. So here's, um, yeah, right. so here's the applications, right? You made an application, so okay. So go here. So here's the client ID and here's okay. the secret, right? And mm -hmm. then I'm allowing the client credential flow and then I'm setting the API as the as the role for that. And he has only um, execution on um, the GraphQL. If you wanna go in there and look, we go into settings. In this case, I'm not sure that's the best flow for, for a web app like this. It works, but I'm not sure that's the best flow because in this case, you have to share uh, with your app. In your app, you have to, to know the client ID and the secret. 
is not um, in, in a web app, I think the flow will require an um, interactive exchange from yeah. the client. I think you could add some functionality in Orchard Core where we don't have to do that, right? So well, well, it's, it, the functionality is here in the OpenID Connect. There are multiple flows. You see, there is the authorization code flow, the refresh token flow, the client credential flow, and okay. I think you need the authorization code flow in this case. But because when I talk to Kevin about which flows to use and how to make the client credential flow, how to use it for console apps, he said use the client credential flow for apps for disconnected apps. Well, disconnected for autonomous apps, but when you are in a web app, maybe it's better to just pop up the user. Oh no, yeah, because it's not the app that you want to authenticate, maybe the user, I don't know, maybe it's the app that you want to authenticate. It works, but I'm not sure it's the best one for a web app here, but that's okay. better than no, that's, at least I'm sure Kevin will be happy because that's better than no uh, authentication <laughs> at all. Yeah. You, why you will complain? Um, and uh, but that works. Okay, that's so that's an application. That's what I wanted to check. It was not a user ID. It was a an application ID. Okay, good. Yeah, so and, I'm following all the good things for Orchard Core. Maybe not the right ones, but yeah, okay. that's okay. So um, and then I had another question. Um, oh yes. <clears throat> Not more of a comment, actually, I th because I think I saw a video where you showed how to um, render the markdown and you mentioned mark dig. But can you show the GraphQL query that you're uh, doing? Where is it? I, the, yeah. the, in the code? Yes. OK. To render the blog post because you say you are using mark dig, which is by itself interesting because it means Bindig works in Blazor Wasm on the client yeah. side. Yeah. But it's okay. interesting, but at the same time, you don't need to do that because, because GraphQL um, has um, a property to give you the process markdown already. Okay. Our implementation of GraphQL. So when you ask for the HTML body in the GraphQL query, I don't know if you find it, in your code, it's in your code when you render the blog post. You okay. must have code. So what's nice is that it, everything is all components. So this is just like Angular. The whole model architecture, you know, component model architecture is just like Angular, and there, and it, which is kind of cool. So here's here's actual the code here. 162. Yeah. So here, when you say author published, you see Markdown body. Instead of markdown body, you can say HTML body, I think. And then you won't get markdown, but you will get a line 162. 162, okay. This is your GraphQL query. And if you see display text, subtitle, author, publish, you see markdown body, you can also ask for uh, HTML body, and then you won't have to call marking. You won't need marking. Uh, because okay. so I don't have to call this, you're saying. Yeah, okay. That's why that's why we made it in we added that explicitly on the GraphQL endpoint for body parts because we know that people don't might not want to execute markdown directly. They might want it. They might want the markdown on the client side, but maybe they just want the HTML already rendered with the URLs and everything. And then in this case, you just ask. Uh, um, so I, I think if you go to the GraphQL Explorer, you will see the property and you will see the result. But that's still interesting to see that you can process the the, the markdown on, on on the client side also. Interesting. Yeah, so I'm using, um, let's see, this is where I get the, the token, and then down here is where I do the request, and this is where basically I'm just serializing the, the JSON file into this API GraphQL structure, which is basically um, defined right here. So here's the the root class, and then you have the data blog post. And of course, this is the blog post is an array. Then you have the markdown inside here, and so I'm just using the the standard. Um, yeah, let's see. Yep, right here, and then I basically, the markdown is basically gotten from here, so it's API GraphQL.data, 
dot blog post zero because I'm just looking at the first one markdown body dot markdown. So it follows that structure. And this is where I'm actually doing the, the rendering here, I guess, is where I'm calling markdig and doing markdown to HTML markdown. So. Yeah, that's why I'm saying you don't need this step if you right. ask for this email directly, but you will try it and you will test. Um, and also you are creating a custom class to map the JSON payload to a POCO. I'm not sure, I, yeah, that that's nice, but at the same time, it's a lot of boilerplate work to do. Well, uh, maybe. you have the function, right? You have, you can copy a, your your JSON file and then paste as a, C as C sharp code, right? So that uh, that's done for you automatically. Okay. So it's not that it's not that hard to do, but yeah, it, it that's how Microsoft decided to implement that, which is kind of interesting because working with XML, I think it's a lot easier with back in the XML days when they had the parser there, and then it would give you mm -hmm. errors and, and all of that. So I, I think the XML worked a little bit better. You you can do the same thing with. Um... The JSON document, you can get a dynamic uh, version of the. Of yeah, the but object. there's there's a big war between Newton JSON and and all these new Microsoft um, system text JSON. Yeah. Yeah. So text, so it's and they're kind of a battle right now, right? A battle royale with who, some some people like this and some people like that. So that's kind of interesting. Well, the idea is that system text JSON is more integrated and is faster than Newton sub JSON. But new touch JSON has more features. I hear, so. I hear stories that Newton's faster than than that. So, but I don't know. But no, it's not. Maybe okay. for whatever system text JSON does, it's faster than new touch JSON. And there's a lot of limitations too. I hear. With that's that. why. That's why you want to switch to Newton's and JSON, uh, Newton soft JSON when you don't have the feature in system text JSON. And that's what we do in Orchard Core. We use. Newton's of JSON because we have custom features that we use. Right. And also the, the DOM of JSON, J object, J token, J string, and so on, that are not available yet on system text JSON. So we can't manipulate a JSON document and build one dynamically like this. We can with Newton's of. That's why we are still using Newton's of. Right. And, and then version five is, has a lot more features. So I heard yeah. that's a lot better and quicker. And, but not yet what we need in Orchard, which is sad, but that's okay. Um, okay, all good, very nice. Thank you.